we want to focus on plumbing, domestic water, why and where you need domestic hot water recirculation pumps. So why? Why would you even bother adding all these pumps to systems? I think we got to slow down a little bit and realize uh, water usage. And this slide is dated for 2000, but I think the point is, uh, is very well made. Uh, in the USA, we use an awful lot of water. In the southeast, we probably average about 180 gallons of water per person. Now that's what your personal private use is in your home. That would be showers, dishwashers, cooking, uh, whatever you use in your home averages that kind of water usage. One of my favorite little comments is this egg thing that kind of blows people's mind. But it takes 120 gallons to produce an egg. And that's from the time that you have an egg and you hatch it to, uh, to a little chicken and you grow it up and you feed it up big enough to have eggs divided out by the number of eggs that chicken will produce in its lifetime and the total amount of water. So uh, pretty interesting little stat there, about 120 gallons per egg. But I think the point's well made and I think you kind of have the message. So we're talking about water. Uh, those of us in the South East have been blessed, but you, we can go back to uh, Georgia area just a few years ago and they had a serious drought. If you get over to uh, Vegas anytime soon, notice the big white ring around the top of Lake Mead. The southwest and California is in a serious water shortage now. And it's going to get worse. And uh, we want to focus on how to save that water so you understand why this research pump has become part of codes. The, the, the whole surface of the earth is you know, lots of water. But unfortunately, it's predominantly salt. And the other key thing you need to look at is the population. That world population is growing rapidly. And if we look at the total numbers as it grows, obviously we've got to have more fresh water. And we are already in trouble, so as we grow, you begin to see we've got to pay attention to this resource. Water is a precious resource. We're just going to have to manage butter in the future. So what is the purpose of hot water recirculation and hot water recirculation pumps? Very simple, to save water, to conserve water by providing hot water to the fixture quickly. In other words, you get ready to take a shower. Nobody likes to take cold showers. So you get in the shower. How long does it take the water to get to the shower? The hot water. And all that cold water is going where? Down the drain. You're washing dishes. Whatever you may be doing, you, you really want your hot water to be there pretty much instantaneously. And all of, the, all of us, including me, will sit there and wait until we get that hot water. And what we're trying to do with the research concept is to save that water, conserve that water. Don't throw it down the drain. Let's use it. And that's kind of a simple way to get this conversation started. Here is a uh, snapshot from Energy Code 90.1-2010, which is becoming the building energy code throughout the country. And will be shortly. If it's not in your state, it will be there shortly. A couple little quick comments on service water heating I think kind of kind of interesting. And service water heating is what we're talking about. Temperature maintenance. And, and then red might be important the way I teach. Automatic time switches and other controls. Those you shall have a timer and actually temperature sensing controls so that when you're not using hot water, like late at night, you have the ability to program the pump and turn the pump off. So the energy code is saying, let's turn these pumps off when we don't need them. If we can program them, we'll have temperature controls, let's kill them energy-wise. Next statement is they say, let's hold the maximum temperature to 110 degrees. And most of us have been in a business, we probably would say about a 105 to the actual fixture is OK. 110 probably OK, but limit it to 110. Last but not least, this is circulate a pump control at the bottom. And that's the one that circulates the water to the tank and the water heater. This is not the research pump all the way out. This is the pump that moves the water between the water heater and the storage tank. And basically it's saying after five minutes of the, of the water heater turning off, we got to kill the pump. And the reason it's running this extra five minutes is to take any residual heat out of the water heater when you turn it off and put it in the storage tank. It's much a whole lot more efficient than leaving the heat over there and not doing anything with it. But why continue, why continue running the pump once it's pulled the residual heat out? Pretty basic, pretty simple stuff. But here's the message from 90.1-2010 Energy Code. Cycle the pump. Turn it off. And I think you need to keep that in mind when you look at the next slide. This is OSHA. What's OSHA say? It just kind of got you in a box. 
uh, I think the most important thing that you get from this particular slide is OSHA is worried about Legionella, and we know it can thrive in hot water systems. Uh, they don't want any uh, dead legs or uh, any areas you don't have recirculation through. Uh, down on the maintenance section three, they want you to get that water to roughly 140 degrees to uh, kill it. And last but not least, the domestic hot water recirculation pump shall run continuously. And that's directly in violation with the energy code. Uh, and as you say, uh, they're claiming that the recirculation hot water pump should be excluded from energy conservation measures. It's kind of important. A lot of you engineers probably never seen these two things. Which one are you going to design to? I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm just trying to see the box you're in here. Energy code says cut it on and off. OSHA says no, run it continuously. You got to make your choice. I think most people are going to go with OSHA. I got some good news coming for you. Not quite here yet, but make sure you understand that in a minute with the Legionella, Legionella thing. The Legionella thing is still growing, and, and uh, here's a little snapshot from a newspaper back 2012. But there's a lot of cases of it out there, and just to remind you, Legionella is is connected directly with pneumonia. So uh, this shows a death, but you know most people who contact this do not die but they do get pneumonia from the Legionella uh, bacteria. So, so the point is uh, we need to be aware of that.